Professor Modusudan and she did her postdoc at Georgia Tech. Currently, she is an associate professor at Purdue University. Her research interest lies broadly on theoretical computer science and focuses on sublinear algorithm, complexity theory, coding theory, learning theory, and <laughs> many more. In today's talk, she will talk about uh, her work on locally decodable code, a special kind of error correcting code, uh, which has huge application in storage technology, hardness amplification, information retrieval, and probabilistic checkable proofs, many more areas. So please welcome Professor Elena. I'm handing over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction and thank you for the invitation and thanks everybody for being here so late in the day at your place. Um, so yes, I'll be talking about uh, local code for um, insertion and deletion errors. Uh, and this is based on three papers that are joint work with uh, subsets of, um, of these authors. Alex Block, who was a po um, a PhD student at Purdue. He just graduated. Uh, my colleague Jeremiah Blocky from Purdue. Uh, my colleague from Peking University, Quan Cheng. Uh, Shuban Kulkarni, who was an undergrad slash master student uh, while uh, doing this work here at Purdue, and now he's a PhD student at UIUC. Xin Li, my uh, colleague from uh, John Hopkins, Yu Zheng, who uh, was uh, his student and he just graduated, and Min Shen Zhu, who is my student and is going to graduate this year. Um, so I, uh, I'll spend just a little bit of time on, on the in introducing um, the jargon, um, which is stuff you might have seen in other uh, settings. But um, so what what are insertion deletion errors and what are insertion deletion or install codes? Um, so we have two strings X and Y um, over an alphabet uh, sigma. They could be of different lengths. Um, the added distance between X and Y is the minimum number of insertions and deletions in X to obtain Y. So for example, for 0, 1, 0, 1 as X and 1, 1, 1 as Y, um, the edit distance is four because you need to wipe out the zeros and um, insert ones instead. So you'd have um, uh, four operations. Um, so that can be this distance, edit distance can be compared to Hamming distance, uh, which is probably what you're more familiar with, the number of, uh, so here we're looking at strings of the same length, S and T's are the same. Uh, the number of uh, indices i where xi differs from yi. Uh, and if you think a little bit about it, um, you can see that the edit, edit distance between x and y um, is upper bounded by twice uh, the Hamming distance between x and y. Um, so in particular, you can think of as uh, if the edit distance is large, then the Hamming distance must, uh, must be large. OK, so this, these are just basic notions of distance. Um, and uh, now the, the jargon for codes is that you have a message X um, that lies in sigma to the N, um, and you encode it via a code C that maps messages of length N into code words of length M. Um, and um, you want to have a decoding function D that maps back the, the code words to the messages. So, and you, you want a little bit more than that. You want to map back code word plus some error. I mean, if there is some error in the code, not too much, uh, in the code word, not too much, uh, you still want to be able to get back X. So you want to decode uh, the received word um, to uh, back to the message that was sent. OK, um, then the relative minimum distance of a code is an important a classical parameter of the code. So um, think of a code as a collection of, uh, let's say, uh, vectors. Um, we're looking at the minimum uh, Hamming distance between these vectors and we normalize it uh, for uh, Hamming distance by M and for edit distance by 2M so that um, so that uh, this quantity lies in the interval 0, 1. 
Um, and the rate of the code is another classical parameter. Um, it's defined as um, n over m. It's again in 0, 1. Um, and what we would like to do um, is construct codes that have um, kind of constant rate, constant relative distance. These are called good codes. Uh, so constant rate means that we don't add too much redundancy. Redundancy is expensive to deal with. Um, and uh, delta um, tells us about, uh, delta being large, tells us that you can uh, kind of correct from a large fraction of error. Okay, that's kind of the intuition. Um, so goals of the constructions, constant rate, constant distance, these are good, called good codes. Um, and uh, the algorithmic goals are that we want efficient encoding and efficient decoding. And here we mean um, efficient by um, polynomial in, uh, in uh, M. Okay, so if there are questions, just ask me, uh, interrupt me. I, I, I'm not in a rush to finish anything, so I'd prefer that people um, take something from, from this talk. Um, hey, so one there, quick huh? yes. a so edit distances can be like significantly smaller though, right? I'm just like I'm more used to the Hamming version of this problem where you mm -hmm. like those packing bounds and right. Stuff. So for instance, you can think about um, a string like zero one zero one zero one and the, one, zero, and the one, shift yeah, one zero exactly. one zero one zero. Right. Hamming yeah. distance is N, and, yeah. and edit distance is just two. Two, yeah, two. So two. It, they edit distance could be very, very small compared to Hamming. Uh -huh. So everything, like pretty much, I guess, informally what I'm asking is that like whatever I know about Hamming distance, I should not try to translate. Like edit, it's a much more challenging problem. Exactly, right. It, it, exactly. Edit errors are much more uh, challenging or like, OK, edit distance. Um, yeah, whatever problem you're thinking about, but definitely yeah. having edit errors. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to get to it right in, in one slide. Let me get, sure. get sure. Yeah. yeah, I'll get back to it. Yeah, very good question. So in terms of uh, history, um, Levenstein in 66 introduced um, insertion and deletion codes. Uh, but only 30 years later, um, the, the first constructions of codes that, that we like, uh, good codes with efficient and uh, efficient encoding and decoding schemes were constructed by Schulman and Zuckerman. Um, and kind of soon after that, this area of getting best possible parameters uh, picked up. There are lots of works um, recently in, in building um, kind of the asymptotically best codes with, with best parameters um, and decoding um, um, algorithms that are as efficient as possible, uh, and also variants like least decoding, for instance. Um, and, and if one wants to read about surveys, here are a couple of sur surveys that, uh, that, that are excellent surveys about recent work. Okay. Um, local code. So what is a local code? Um, so this is a more kind of modern uh, class of codes. Instead of wanting to decode the entire code word in time that is proportional, that is polynomial in, uh, um, in, in the code word length in M, what we would like to decode is one message bit. So bit I of the message, but in time that is proportional with um, log M or uh, or instead we want to decode it in sublinear time. OK, so this kind of um, like beyond, uh, you know, pictures, uh, the motivation is we want to kind of retrieve a file from our library that is uh, large in time that is proportional to the size of the file rather than proportional to the size of the library. And we are assuming that there are errors in, in the uh, encoding. So, so um, here is a more formal thing, um, formal definition. So we want to decode for every i, we want to decode bit i uh, by making only q many queries into the code word 
um, or into the received word. Um, and uh, we want to decode beta with probability half plus epsilon. Um, and the amount of error that that um, uh, we can sustain is um, a delta fraction. OK, so delta fraction and here initially, I mean, the classical notion is for Hemming code. So you have a delta fraction of deletions in the code uh, in the received code word. Um, and you still want to retrieve the i bit, each i bit with, with good probability, but we're only allowed to query the um, received word in Q many positions. So Q is called the locality or query complexity of the code. So just if you've never seen um, such codes before, um, here is a very um, classical example. It's the set of all linear functions over F2. So you encode um, a message X of N bits into a code word uh, that is the inner product of X with every single element of the field F2 to the N, of the vector space F2 to the N. So it's just A dot X mod, um, mod 2. Um, and so suppose you have an ordering of F2 to the N, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 is 0, 0, 0 is the first, 1, 1, 1 is the last. Uh, so we have lexicographic ordering, let's say. Um, now, suppose you um, receive, uh, so, so there are some um, entries, right, in um, in the code word that become, um, that, that, that are flipped. I'm just thinking of Hamming errors now, so they are flipped. Instead of a zero, I have a one. Instead of a one, I have a zero. Um, here is, here is a decoder for the ith bit. So what we do is we pick a, a uniformly random vector of n bits, um, and we query a and a with the ith uh, entry uh, flipped. OK, so we query this position a somewhere in, in this code word is, is a, and, and then um, the, the than the entry a plus ei. Uh, and if you think for a little bit, these are linear functions. So um, if there is no error, um, Hadamard of a plus Hadamard of a plus ei is exactly um, Hadamard. It's the uh, ith bit. It's ai. OK, uh, but if there is a fourth minus, um, let's say, epsilon over two many errors, then we're still going to hit um, both um, YA and YA plus EI um, that are not corrupted with probability half plus epsilon by a union bound. So, so this is a, a very simple code, the Hadamard code. And uh, what we proved here is that it is a two query um, locally decodable code for, for uh, this amount of error. Uh, a fourth minus epsilon over two. So this is a very classical code. Um, it has um, kind of length two to the n, so it's it's a very bad rate n over two to the n. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it's a two query uh, locally decodable code. I can decode every bit of the uh, message, making only two queries in the received word. So what what our question from here is? Um, and it's still open um, even after our work. Um, do constant query and now INSDEL uh, LDCs exist? So instead of Hamming error, now assume that these entries that are corrupted are just either wiped out or something is inserted. And we're asking, um, Forget about two queries, but is there a constant? Do there exist constant query in the um, locally decodable code? So this is kind of like the big open question that remains even after um, our work. Um, yeah. So at this point, I'm just kind of hoping to uh, that 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 you get some intuition about um, what what these codes are and kind of what what the big question out there uh, still is. Um, and um, I, I like this paper as motivation. There is a recent paper in Nature Materials, and uh, what they do is they 
they talk about the bio like recent advances in the biotechnology of achieving random access to um, to DNA uh, encoding. So um, it turns out that DNA data storage uh, suffers precisely from insertion deletion errors. And what they want to do here is be able to achieve um, random access so that they can efficiently retrieve specific files or arbitrary subset of files. So this is exactly the motivation of uh, locally decodable codes. Um, okay, so this, this was just um, for some uh, motivation. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, what we know in terms of constructions of INSDEL LDCs. Um, so there is a, a paper from 2015 of, of Ostrovsky, Parskin, and Chernyavsky, um, and they show the following statement. Like maybe, okay, how would you even start uh, constructing instead locally decodable codes. Uh, and maybe maybe the first thing you would try is, okay, we have a lot of construction of hemming locally decodable codes. Can we somehow uh, massage them into getting um, instead locally decodable codes? And that's exactly what uh, this paper does. So basically, if you take a Q query hemming locally decodable code, that maps n bits in um, m uh, n uh, alphabet symbols into m alphabet symbols, and um, which corrects a delta fraction of Hamming errors. Then you can construct um, an insertion deletion locally decodable codes, where the query complexity blows up blows up by poly logarithmic in m, so the code word length. Um, so um, Q times poly log M is the new query complexity. Now we have an INSDEL LDC. Um, it's a binary code, so you map N into uh, M prime many bits, um, and M prime is just a constant fraction bigger than M. Um, and moreover, we can also correct a constant fraction times delta many um, insertion deletion errors. So in terms of the, in terms of uh, good codes, we, we, we get really nice um, um, kind of blow ups, constant blow ups in, ter in terms of the classical parameters, um, which is rate and distance, uh, but the query complexity blows up by polylog M. Um, and uh, it, we actually discovered this result after we also proved it ourselves using um, other techniques. Um, so, um, um, so in 2020, we rediscovered this result. We used some uh, slightly different techniques, uh, but this is basically our uh, the first paper we wanted to talk about. And in terms of other works, there are uh, some um, also recent works by uh, subsets of um, our collaborators. Um, and uh, these are works in slightly different models. And in terms of query, they get polylog um, and time type um, uh, codes. Okay, so now let's see what what that implies, what this theorem implies. Yes. Given there is a question. Yeah, quick question. Yeah, so the previous slide, even if I ignore the like the query aspect of it, like the implication is non-obvious, right? Like the fact that you can construct a like a, a yeah. But but this has been known actually ever since the initial paper of um, of uh, Schulman and Zuckerman. I mean not the initial the the ninety nine paper by Schulman and Zuckerman. Um, okay. Yeah, and and as we'll see, I'll talk a little bit about uh, this construction, and it's actually very similar to that paper. Uh, but we, we have to do a little bit more work to get the query complex to make it to make the construction local. But yeah, okay. that's a very good question. Yeah. And this is like, uh, again, the query aspect is uh, is for all uh, indices. It's not. Uh, right. It's if, not you, if you take an arbitrary LDC of Q queries, you can you can kind uh -huh, of massage okay. it into. Uh, yeah, uh, you can encode it into an instant. LDC. OK, so you start the starting point is like it can be any locally decodable code with the exactly exactly okay. yeah okay thanks 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. More questions? Uh, I have a question in the previous slide uh, that you are on. Uh, so it's probably a basic question. Uh, yeah, this one. Uh, so is uh, uh, so we are defining a locally decodable code with the existence of a decoder. Uh, so is this a sort of uh, probabilistic property or how does it right, work? right, exactly. You need randomness, uh, otherwise. Uh, so which is a probabilistic property? Uh, so how you okay. pick the queries, right? You you need randomness in order to pick the queries. Um, and we're, uh, the, the error is adversarial, but the query is uniformly at random, so you're going to um, hit an error with probability uh, delta. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, uh, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so yeah, this is what started this whole um, direction. Now, given um, this transformation, let's look at what Hemming LDCs exist in the literature and what those imply in the INSDEL um, world. So, as we saw, there is a Q equals two query, uh, M equals two to the N exponential code word length, uh, the Hadamard code. That implies immediately a poly N query order of two to the n uh, code word length in the LDC, and that's really not interesting at all. Then there are these um, uh, fantastic works of um, Yekane and, um, and others with, which uh, construct three query and above, constantly many queries with sub, uh, sub exponential length. Um, but when you transform those back into INSDEL, again, we get um, we don't get too interesting parameters. So things start being interesting in the poly log and query regime for LDCs, where we actually have almost linear um, um, code words for poly log and queries. Uh, so these are achieved by uh, classical read Muller codes. And here we get something of similar parameters. So poly log n um, and almost linear length um, code words. So this is for INSDEL. Um, and then in the polynomial or like slightly sub polynomial query regime, um, there are constructions that get us constant rate. So order of n, m equals order of n. Um, and those imply a similar parameters. So something like log n to the log log n queries for constant rate. So these two, the, the Polylog and uh, polynomial query regime are the important, are the interesting uh, regimes where we get something via this um, uh, theorem. For constant um, so query, was, yeah. For constant query, are there any lower bounds on M? So exactly, uh, that's exactly what one of our papers is doing. Uh, so um, I'll talk to it about it in a few slides. Okay. I want to give just a little bit of uh, overview of the reduction to kind of get you uh, to think about how, how, how these codes are constructed. Um, so there is um, a sort of a concatenation happening here. Let me just draw the picture. Uh, so we start with a Hemming locally decodable code. So we, we encode X with um, a Hemming locally decodable code, which means that I re can recover every uh, bit of the message uh, by making um, few queries to the code word. Um, and then I'm going to um, create a bunch of blocks log uh, of, of size about the log M. Um, and um, I'm going to call them B1, B2, and so on. Um, to each block, I'm going to append its position, its index. OK, so I'm, I, I just want to. So when when insertion deletion errors happen, um, there is huge misalignment, so we don't even know where things could come from. So adding um, the position is a way to kind of um, tell the decoder that this is the block that should have been at, at position J minus one, let's say. 
Um, and, and to make it even more robust to errors, we apply this Schulman zuckerman codes, which only blow up the um, rate by, uh, by a constant and the distance by a constant fraction, and they're efficiently decodable, uh, so they're, they're kind of nice. Um, and to make things even, even more kind of separable, uh, we add a bunch of uh, buffers, like uh, zero buffers, and these have also size about log n. Okay, so the final thing looks like this thing at the end here. Um, uh, we're kind of adding a, a lot of redundancy to kind of make sure we know where the positions are and and uh, we, we're trying to separate as much the blocks with information as possible. Okay. Um, so what does the local decoder do? So suppose there is no error. If there is no error, I know exactly what each bit where each bit landed. Uh, so basically, I'm going to simulate the local Hemming outer decoder, um, and I'm going to figure out where uh, where the block that I was interested in is. I'm going to decode it using schumann zuckerman code, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to um, output um, the final output of the outer decoder on these queries, Q1, Q2, Qt, that, needed, that I needed to decode Xi. OK, so this is kind of like a, a simple thing. Now, the problem is that now we have a bunch of errors. So insertion, deletion errors. Where did where did everything go? Um, and the problem is that we we need to search for an index um, in, in this corrupted code word. Um, and this is not, uh, it, it's, it's actually the non-trivial part of things. Where is the index that I'm interested in? And I want to search for it in a local, um, I, I don't want to make too many queries. Um, so it turns out that finding the buffers and searching for the index are, are very interconnected. Um, so in terms of helpful properties um, of the schumann zuckerman code, um, so the fact that we have constant rate, constant distance, uh, decoder can uh, is efficient and encoder is efficient, uh, kind of gives us uh, this poly log m query complexity, right? Because the the size of uh, the information uh, buffers is uh, is log m, so to decode it, it's poly log m. Actually, it's even linear time. Um, and another very this property four is kind of the crucial property here that uh, for every interval of length um, about uh, theta k, so this is the, the length of, of the block, um, the encoding has actually a large fractional Hemming weight. So there are many ones that, uh, that appear in the encoding of the information bits. And that is nice because we uh, intuitively you can see that you can separate the information bits from the buffers uh, by just making few queries you can uh, really um, figure out whether something is close to one or close to zero uh, you don't need uh, too much okay well, now the question remains it remains uh, of how to find block j in the corrupted code word and one very useful idea here is that you you don't have that much error. You have a delta fraction of error. You can insert delete things, but you you don't have that much power. So in particular, most of the blocks are in um, in the correct relative order. Okay, uh, so um, so that helps us perform something called a noisy uh, binary search, which I'll talk just a little bit about uh, in this slide. So here is the toy problem, which is very, very much related to what we need to do here. Uh, you have something called a delta sorted array. So this is an array in which if you remove a delta fraction of uh, entries, um, the array becomes sorted. And now we want to find uh, elements in this um, array. OK, um, so we can show that one can find um, not all the elements, um, some elements, many elements, um, in time of polylog n. So one can perform this noisy binary search to locate element j in a delta sorted array of size n in polylog n time, um, as long as these j's have a nice property 
and it turns that it turns out that there there is a constant fraction of j's that have uh, this nice property. Um, so basically, um, again, the idea here is because most indices are in order, um, the the with high probability. Uh, when we pick a random set of indices and perform binary search um, um, around the median, the element we're looking for is on the right side of the, of the median of, of these randomly searched indices. Um, and and uh, so that's kind of one of the main ideas. And another uh, important idea is that um, there are indices J's J that have this uh, locally goodness property, uh, which means that um, if we look at every interval that contains J, the error density in that interval is small. So, and that helps us when we recurse, so we don't uh, kind of increase the error density once we choose um, a side or another. So this is very high level, but it's just for you to get some intuition. I'm not going to get into the details because I also want to talk about the constant um, um, query um, uh, LDCs. So, um, so OK, in summary, we can transform uh, Hamming LDC with polylog M uh, loss in uh, query complexity. Uh, and that gives us no implication to the constant query regime, as, as we saw, uh, which which kind of leads to these uh, questions. Is noisy binary search inherent to um, insertion deletion? Which means like, do there really exist constant query LDCs? Um, so it's, it's not clear. I mean, intuitively to me, it seems like one should perform a noisy binary search for at least an index, but um, we, we don't uh, know how to do that. We don't know how to prove that um, uh, binary search is inherent. Um, OK, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is lower bounds for constant queries, which um, was the uh, one of the questions I had. Uh, so what is uh, the case for constant queries? So we already saw um, the, the first three uh, columns of this table. Uh, Elena, there is a question here. Yeah, oh, OK, yeah, yeah, I don't see the questions, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, before you move on, so uh, I guess like uh, um, like from, from understanding like the way you are doing this noisy by research, these queries are adaptive. Like, so you query, get a response, and then, so it is like the non-adaptive version uh, something interesting to look at or not, not really? It's just a harder handicap. Because like the first example of the Hadamard construction that you defined was non adaptive. I just right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, okay. So there will be another example. Let's 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 look at that. Uh, it, it's uh, again the Hadamard code, uh, but for Insdel, adapted to okay. Insdel. Um, yeah, these are very good questions. Uh, I mean, yeah, we don't okay. we don't know much about uh, this code, so. Um, yeah, it may be an unnecessary handicap. So, like, yeah, maybe. So, so yeah, yeah, happen. yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good questions. Okay. So, in terms of lower bounds for constant queries, um, Hadamard is for for two queries. Hadamard is the best you can do. There is an amazing paper by uh, Karen Diz and the Wolf um, that shows an exponential lower bound for um, for two query LDCs. It uses quantum computing. Um, uh, it, it's uh, quantum arguments, and it was de de -quant uh also by um, uh, I forget the name of all the authors. The wolf was one of them, but but this proof still kind of uh, holds the flavor, still has the flavor of uh, quantum um, arguments. But anyways, uh, there there is an exponential lower bound, and the Hamming lower bound is also an insdel lower bound because hemming errors are insdel errors okay so there is an exponential lower bound for two queries um, for q equals three and beyond the lower bounds are extremely weak so it's uh, almost linear what we have here um, and beyond that um, yeah but it's um, not too interesting but in particular very weak lower bounds for Q uh, greater than or equal to three, tight uh, at Q equals two. 
So in our paper, um, um, the second paper in this uh, sequence of works, what we show is an exponential in n lower bound, which I'm going to talk about next. Um, and uh, so, so this, as I just mentioned, it's not new uh, for Q equals two, but it's new for, uh, I, I mean, new. It's not interesting for Q equals two because um, it's um, inherited, um, but it's interesting for uh, the regime be beyond uh, Q equals three. And we also show that um, for Q equals two, there are no linear instant uh, LDCs um, and, and the bounds for uh, Q greater than three look like uh, essentially exponential in what we have for Hemming. Um, and um, at, at Q equals log over log log, uh, the, the bound looks kind of like X in log uh, D minus two. Um, anyways, so around log to the fifth, we, we don't have anything. We don't have constructions and we don't have lower bounds. Uh, but 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 the interesting here uh, thing here is the exponential lower bounds for instel um, in regimes where we don't have the same for uh, Hemming or we we don't even know what uh, the situation there would be. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, this uh, this proof uh, for um, constant query instel. But just to kind of um, say a few words about how people proved. Um, um, lower bounds for um, Hemming error um, for Hemming uh, in, um, LDCs. So one important uh, kind of concept here is the notion of smooth decoding, which is the fact that uh, you have a decoder that doesn't query uh, any index J in the code word too many times. So it queries every index uh, with probability one over order of one over M. So we have this smooth decoding, um, and it turns out that every LDC can be transformed into a smooth um, decoder LDC. Um, and then one can show that um, if you view uh, the queries as hyper edges in a hypergraph with, with M vertices, one can show that there exists a large matching of hyper edges, so something of size omega M over Q. And so from here, this matching is kind of beaten to death using uh, various arguments like quantum information, matrix, hyperconductivity, and so on and so forth. And from here, one derives uh, the proofs for kind of Hemming LDCs. So in our case, what we look at is, um, is the set of um, queries that kind of, um, that are good for the decoder uh, in, in the following sense. So let's define for every I, message bit I, good I, is the set of uh, Q tuples such that if we restrict uh, the code word on those uh, queries, um, there exists a function that um, correlates with the XI bit with um, good probability. Okay, so these are um, uh, um, these queries that um, are good in the sense that there exists a function. And uh, Katz and Trevisan in the initial paper that introduced LDCs um, show that um, every such Q, every good query Q, is, can be good for only um, order of Q many message bits. OK, so if yeah, one, uh, one tuple cannot be good for too many message bits. And also, um, we, we can show that for every um, I decoder, decoder of I, the ith message bit, uh, must query something in good I with uh, probability at least three, 3 epsilon over 2, um, just because we want half plus epsilon decoding um, um, success. OK, so one can show these things. Um, so from here, uh, the, the kind of conceptual uh, contribution of the paper is we ask this question, what, what deletion patterns make the decoder work hard? And this is something new uh, in the sense that uh, we don't really think about deletion patterns for, uh, for the Hemming uh, case. So, um, so this is what kind of most of our work goes into, understanding 
how uh, how to create hard deletion patterns uh, such that the decoder um, works uh, kind of hard. Um, okay, so so here is some um, intuition. So suppose we start with um, the code word above, um, and um, some now forget about insertions. Uh, completely. Let's just work with deletions. This is enough for our lower bounds. So um, there are some uh, some deletions that happened in the code word and I ended up with a smaller uh, code word. And if I have deletions, so, so suppose that the decoder now queries. Uh, so why uh, tilde is the received word and it queries something like the index K and the index K plus D. OK, uh, so because I only had deletions, this could have come from uh, uh, an index K prime and an index K prime plus D prime uh, in the initial code word. OK, so maybe now you're asking yourself, why am I writing the query as uh, K and K plus D rather than K and L, let's say? Um, and another observation here and intuition here is that the distance between queries, so, I'm, so as by, by the way, we're only talking about two queries uh, instead of LECs here. So the, it turns out that the distance between queries actually plays an important role, which is again not the case in, um, in Hamming. So uh, sometimes uh, we write the queries as K, K plus D, or even just K, D, uh, where the understanding is that D is actually the, the step from, from the first query. Um, so let's think about some uh, deletion patterns. So the first deletion pattern um, one can think of is uh, pick a random number E and delete, completely wipe out uh, the first E uh, symbols or E bits of the code word. OK, so this is one deletion pattern. Uh, now, given the query tuple K, K plus D, we're asking ourselves what could it have come from in the initial uh, uh, code word. What indices could could it have led to K K plus D? Um, and if you think for a bit, uh, this could have come from um, K plus E and K plus E plus D for uh, for some random E. And the observation here is that the distance between the queries uh, stays the same regardless of E. So if I started, if I ended up with distance D. I must have come from a pair with distance D um, offset. Okay, so this is uh, maybe a place where we can make this definition that the distribution um, upstairs, kind of in, in, in the code word, um, let's call it the induced distribution by the query uh, KD under this error distribution. So we're going to talk a lot about this induced distribution. It turns out to be the right thing to think about. Okay. And now back to uh, to the Hadamard code, which was another question we had. Um, we can actually make the Hadamard code into a two query instead code. For this exact deletion type um, pattern. Uh, so if we think of the Hadamard code as um, as here, where we list every entry uh, in lexicographic order, um, then we can view this decoder pick A and A plus E I as, as the decoder that picks a random pair at distance two to the I minus one. OK, so it's, it's another way of defining exactly the same um, uh, decoder. And um, the claim here is that one can show that with a little bit of massaging, um, this is a two query LDC with exponential length um, that corrects a constant fraction of type one error. So just wiping out um, the, the prefix of the code word. OK, so um, here is one simple way to, to build LDCs, but for one particular instead LDCs for this particular kind of error. OK, so from here, we can think of another deletion pattern, which is also very natural. Suppose you pick a parameter P and delete each uh, bit of the code word with that probability. Okay, 
Um, now, if we look at the induced distribution, so we have query k, k plus d, and we look at the induced distribution by, by this um, uh, deletion probability, um, it turns out, if you think a little bit about it, it it's going to be a distribution where d prime is concentrated uh, around d over 1 minus p, um, and uh, you can obtain every d prime around the mean uh, with probability around 1 over square root of d. Okay, so this is kind of useful um, for us, uh, but it turns out that we need something more. We need something better. We need this d prime to be a bit even flatter than, than 1 over square root of d. So here we introduce another deletion pattern where, pattern where we pick also p uniformly at random and just delete everything uh, with probability p independently. Um, and our final, final deletion pattern is something like type 1, then type 3. So wipe out the prefix and then pick a random p and, and then um, independently delete each bit with probability p. So it turns out that this new distribution is um, has the following properties. And here again, we're only talking about two query instead of LDCs. So for every K and D under uh, this particular type three error distribution, D prime, right? So in the induced distribution above, D prime um, is concentrated in, um, in the interval D uh, constant type times uh, d, so d time uh, d twenty d with with high probability. Okay, so this is very useful to us. Um, and then uh, here is another interesting property: every distance in this interval d twenty d is actually hit uh, kind of uniformly. Uh, so probability that d prime equals j is order of one over d, which is looks a lot like the initial smoothness uh, property uh, that, that we had for Hamming codes. So under this particular error distribution, the induced k prime d prime distribution uh, has these two nice properties that d prime could have come from an interval that is just a constant fraction bigger than d. Um, and nothing in the no, no distance in this interval is hit with uh, large probability. So everything is kind of hit uniformly in this interval. OK, so these are kind of like the kind of like the main property of this distribution. Um, and. OK, do I have 10 minutes or five minutes? How much? Yeah, yeah, 10 minutes left. OK, OK, so. Um, so this is just for intuition. Um, I, Probably you're going to, I'm going a bit too fast, but um, so it, it turns out that there is a query KD such that the induced distribution um, K prime D prime um, um, is, um, is good for the decoder. So there is a function that um, agrees with XI with good probability. Um, and now the question that we're asking is, what does the induced distribution k prime d prime for this particular kd look like? And in particular, we're asking, what does the support of this distribution look like? OK, so what kind of k, k plus k prime d prime could this distribution, uh, could this kd come from? And I'm just going to go to the picture. So here the picture shows um, it's an m by m uh, grid uh, where M here horizontally means the where the first query hits, um, and uh, this M also uh, means where um, represents where what the D is. Okay, so what we show here, where we can go straight to the claim, we can show that there exists um, an R which is about um, log D. Uh, such that in this particular strip of distances, kind of of um, of um, side length about d uh, order of d, uh, and so um, okay, so strip of order of the uh, side length here and m side length here. So a query where the first index is anything in m, but the second one is uh, within 
an order of D from the first one. So there exists such a strip where most of the points in the strip, so there are MD points in here, a constant fraction of these points are actually in the support of this distribution, which means that if we query these points, a constant fraction of, of these points, um, we're going to, um, to get um, uh, uh, the correct, uh, a good correlation with Xi. Okay, so just for the intuition's sake, so there exists such an R uh, for which the set good I of queries that are, uh, for which there is a function that is correlated to Xi intersect this particular um, strip um, has uh, large, uh, is large. So this is an immediate, if you think a little bit, all the three or the, the few uh, concentration, heating, lemma, and smoothness, these properties that I already talked about uh, are going to immediately imply this. So it's it's not a, a hard consequence of this uh, theorem. Um, and rewriting it, one can um, just say that there exists an R for which this ratio is omega of one. So I'm not going to go into the calculations, but from here, really, this is all you need to get the exponential lower bound for two queries. So basically, you're going to bound from above and below this quantity good I intersect PJ over PJ using the properties that um, that I mentioned. And uh, there will be a lower bound of omega N and an upper bound of order of log M. This implies the exponential lower bound. OK, so. Again, per se, this this proof um, is not uh, the, not the proof, but the result M equals M is exponential in N is not new because it's implied by the previous proof. But the nice thing about it is that it easily generalizes to um, to more than three queries and to non-existence of a fine and linear uh, two query in the LDCs. But it's also interesting for to the two query case because it actually provides an alternative proof for the Karenidis and the Wolf, which is kind of strictly combinatorial. There is no kind of quantum like arguments in here. Um, so just to say a few more words about how to generalize it, um, it turns out that we can we want distributions that have some nice properties um, and, and uh, these are kind of the properties it's a bit a lot of symbols but uh, if we think of s as the set of um, indices that are deleted we want that uh, the distribution has this property that s is kind of small and we, we don't want more than delta m indices to be deleted um, we want concentration which means that s intersect every interval um, is is small. There aren't that many errors on each uh, interval. Uh, and then this anti-concentration property, which means that uh, if we have disjoint intervals, S kind of intersects um, uh, these intervals in each, um, in a certain number of points with probability that is inverse proportional to the size of the interval. And this quantity here, BMK, is kind of what we're fighting for. So, <clears throat> so anyways, I know it's a bit fast, but just uh, as intuition, that property uh, implies this particular generalization that uh, we want for Q many queries. So for Q many queries, the uh, consecutive distances matter, um, are important. So K prime is the first query, K prime plus D1 prime is the second query, K prime plus D1 prime plus D2 prime is the third and so on and so forth. So we, we wonder the probability that that query hits um, an arbitrary position, an arbitrary uh, um, tuple in M to the Q is bounded by something like this log M to Q over M times D1, D2 and so on and so forth. So for two queries, we had exactly that uh, the bound that I showed was that the probability that k prime d prime is an arbitrary j1 g2 was order of one uh, over md and so this generalizes to this kind of a bound so in terms of like a technical question here uh, we could ask can can this log uh, 
and be improved, what is the best possible op upper bound? How can we build distributions where we can drive this quantity uh, further down? So this is a particular um, um, kind of technical uh, question here. Um, you know, I I can take some questions here. I had a, a third variant, a variant of uh, LDCs that I wanted to talk about, but I, I won't have time. So I can take some questions about this part of the argument. I know it was fast, but but I hope uh, you, you get some intuition about kind of like the, the strategy of the proof. Um, so yeah, if there are questions about the technical part, I can stop a little bit here. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. No questions? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So anyways, we, we saw the proof for two queries. We had to build this nice distribution. The distribution can be generalized um, and, and there is a particular technical open question. That's kind of uh, the point of all this. Um, there is a variant called relax LDCs. We have some results here uh, in, in the third paper that I'm actually going to uh, skip all together. Um, and let me just kind of uh, list uh, a few open questions. I mean, we, we have seen most of them. Um, these ones about relaxed locally decodable codes, I'm going to skip. But just as a takeaway, uh, like a big question here is noisy binary search inherent to constructions of constant query instead of LDCs. Um, and in particular, do constant query instead of LDCs even exist? Right. So we have we have such a simple example, like the first possible thing you can think about for instead for for Hemming LDCs as a construction, but um, we have thought about it and we don't actually have any constructions of uh, constant query instead of LDCs. There could be st strong lower bounds. Um, and even beyond constant, something like little of log square n, um, that's where the reduction also fails. It doesn't give us anything. So even little of log square n query instead of LDCs, we don't know how to build. And um, in terms of uh, applications in, in theory, um, as um, um, yeah, so there are many applications of Hamming LDCs, such as uh, in uh, 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 PIRs, PCPs, self-correction for tolerant uh, circuits, uh, data structures, and quantum computing. But um, we we would like to come up with some applications of Insel LDCs um, beyond um, just kind of their. Um, um, uh, beyond just like uh, storage, which is a real uh, kind of real world application. OK, so yeah, thank you so much for your attention. Yeah, we can take some question. Hey, Elia, thanks for the great talk. So uh, can you uh, elaborate on the point you kept like, I guess I'm trying to understand this, the statement that you made that uh, is uh, uh, noisy binary search inherent to the so right mean, uh, like a uh, so are, are like 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 I guess lower bounds for that might be easier uh, as in you mentioned that there is a like for a, a particular fraction of the elements you can find them in polylog and and for so I guess there would be a some sort of a matching lower bound so is is the sentiment there that uh, like low bounds of that would translate back into low bounds for it, or do you mean more in the, the constructive sense? I, I, yeah, I mean in, in the, con yeah, I don't know. I mean, in the constructive sense, uh, like, or, or like a reduction. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you can decode, uh, can you search? Um, I see. Yeah, so like, is there some sort of like a strong connection between search and decoding? Like intuitively to me, it looks like, OK, at least I need to know where one index went. In mm. which case, I, I, I mean, it, I should 
be I, I, sh I must make a binary search but yeah I don't I yeah we don't know we don't know how to formalize even this question precisely but it's a very nice problem like in and of itself like exactly so are like trade-offs considered so I would like I'm seeing so there's some fraction of the elements like a, as a function of delta corruptions that can be searched in polylog n number of queries right. and you can of course search every element in like linear number of queries just scan the entire so yeah it, right it, yeah is it like just a completely polar result or are there i in guess between? Would be, yeah like figuring out whether something is there or not or so yeah i mean things completely fail once you have a lot of error you you you, you don't have any guarantees once you have accumulated a lot of error on one side, on the side where you need to request. Uh, so it's kind of like a poll. <laughs> Either you can or you're doomed. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, I mean, I guess once you have so much error, then you have to do kind of linear search. Like, no, but yeah, like very nice problem, like as a, just a Yeah. We, mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, hi, yes. Uh, yeah, I had a question. Uh, so I was wondering whether, uh, what, in fact, uh, what strength does the quantum aspect give these algorithms? So is it something, uh, I, I know your strategy is not that, but uh, are, are there, uh, so there are other algorithms in error correcting codes. Uh, what power does quantum give them? So the quantum is actually the it's the lower bound that we know how to prove using quantum arguments or quantum like arguments. Um, the upper bounds are like just combinatorial or like algebraic read Muller or uh, algebraic constructions of things. In fact, all the LDCs that I know of are actually linear LDCs, so it's mostly uh, algebraic constructions in some sense. But the lower bound. Uh, the two query lower bound is using quantum arguments. I see. Uh, so so uh, yeah, we, do, we don't have construction. Uh, maybe that, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Are there quantum to query? Uh, can, can you imagine uh, uh, another algorithm, let's say in the future, which might use quantum to get an upper bound? Um, I mean, yeah, one could just define the problem um, as like, I, I don't know, quantum code or quantum decoding, uh, and then then there should be algorithms or there should be quantum to query um, codes. So it's kind of like a different problem. Like if we move to quantum, we can also yeah, ask yeah. those questions. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, very good question. Is there any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Elena, for such a wonderful talk. <laughs> Thank you. We, for are, we will <laughs> so expect very... you in IIC sometime soon. Oh, I would love to. Yeah, I would love to. And yeah, if you want to give talks at Purdue, let me know. We have a seminar and a reading group, so <laughs> we're always looking for speakers. Yeah.